know, it's really hard to explain powerlifting besides the fact that it is a strength sport that is determined on how much you can lift between the three lifts being squat, bench, and deadlift in your associated weight class. Now, I know that sounds like a mouthful. However, that's kind of pretty much what it is. However, this project is created to show a different perspective of everything that goes on behind the scenes to get to that point from, you know, the people that are throwing these meets to the athlete's perspective and even the coach's perspective. This project follows three athletes that competed in Iron Wars September 11th and 12th held at Texas Strength Systems. But before we get into the competition and their stories, let's start off with the man himself, owner of Texas Strength Systems, Wes Zunker. Good afternoon, everyone. Tomorrow we're hosting our 13th annual USA Powerlifting Iron Wars here at Texas Strength Systems. Uh, meet started in 2009 at the campus of UTSA. Originally Roadrunner Iron Wars, and then it's bounced around, moved down to Southside High School for several years. And the last several, we've been here at uh, Tech Strengths with our event. Uh, last year and this year, it became a two-day two event versus a uh, single-day event. Uh, as always, we give away our uh, weaponry as Iron Wars is our theme. We've done katanas, we've done double-sided axes. Uh, each year, we do some basically weaponry for our uh, best lift awards. This year, with it being 9-11, we did a red, white, and blue theme combo rack, uh, something a little bit different color scheme than what we've done in the past for to commemorate uh, that event. Uh, we're going to do a quick walkthrough of our setup here. Uh, obviously, we have our uh, our backdrop with our t display TVs with uh, DRL lights uh, going through the building. Everything's on a rise platform up here. Going to the other side of the building, we have our warm-up area. We, as we did in the past, we have eight warm-up platforms set up on this side of the building. Oh, in the, in the, we don't have them set up here yet, but we're gonna have our live stream display and our order board up here set up still yet this evening we gotta to put together. Uh, it is a full day's work always getting everything together in here. Uh, in this side of the building we have our warm up area. Four, four platforms on each side. Uh, each side has its own live stream display and uh, lift and cast board for the lifters to look at while they're warming up. Um, some keto plates on, one, on each side in, in the warm-up area. We have some of our Rivanco plates here for the lifters to warm up on. Some pound plates. Uh, on the other side, we have similar Rivanco plates on, on some of the weight trees, pound plates and other trees. We want to make sure lifters uh, sort of have what they need to warm up on. Some are used to lifting on kilos in training. Some are used to lift on pounds. So we sort of have a little bit of both. Uh, for, for both sides of things. Uh, and here again, we have TVs up on top for our board and our live stream uh, display so that when, once again, lifters are warming up, they can keep up with where they're, where they're at in the order. We have our mic system set up on this side as well, so we have audio on, in the back side for the lifters to hear what's going on via the announcing stream as well. All right, so the sport of powerlifting is the squat. Squatting. You'll step out of the rack with the bar on your back and you'll go down, you'll come back up. Um, basically, it's judged upon what is called depth. Uh, depth is when the hip crease is below the knee joint. And so there's three judges. They're all judging you based upon uh, the rules of performance. And so that's one of the primary uh, rules of performance for squat. Bench. Bench. Uh, within our federation, you have to have your feet flat on the ground, hands stay in contact with the bar, and then you'll have a start command, you'll have a press command as you lower the bar to your chest, and then you'll have a rack command as you press the bar back up and return it to the rack. And deadlift. Deadlift. Deadlift is probably the most simple out of all three disciplines, however, um, all it is is you're just picking the bar up off the ground, 
you'll probably hear of two different styles of deadlift, one being sumo, the other being conventional. Uh, just in terms of style, sumo would be with your legs out wide, um, and you would just be pulling the bar up and then returning it back to the ground. Conventional is more so with your feet closer in, and it'd be the same thing, just pulling the bar up, putting it back down. Just different styles of uh, moving. It's not too difficult, however, uh, those are mostly the rules of performance for those three main lifts. First lift of the meet is going to be the squat. Each lifter gets three attempts, coming out to a total of nine total attempts for each lifter. And those attempts make up your total, and that decides your placing in the meet. And that is also going to depend on your weight division, the category that you enter, um, if you're raw, equipped, raw with wraps, or if you're an, an adaptive athlete or any other division. So this section that we're in right now, this is part of the warm-up area. Uh, before their flight is called out to the platform, they will do each lift here. So the starting lift is going to be squats, so they'll do their squat warm-up here. Once they're done with their squat warm-ups, they'll travel over here and we're heading to basically what I like to call the holding room. Um, this is where you, you know, you get hype, you're sitting down, you're waiting for your name to be called on to the stage. Um, and so that's what this area is here. Typically we have chairs lined up on either side along with the screen. And then once their name is called out, they'll head up here on the stage, like I am right now. They'll head here on the stage, walk over to the rack, and then perform whatever lift that it is that they may be doing, uh, whether it's squat, bench, or deadlift. But here's the stage where we lift. Uh, it's pretty nice, a lot different from a lot of other people's uh, platforms, but this is how we do it here. Okay, okay. So no, I mean, I think Priscilla's gonna do really well. Um, she wasn't trying to cut for this meet. She was just gonna come in and compete at a comfortable body weight and she actually managed to make the, uh, 50, the 57, so she's gonna compete at her normal comp weight, and I think she's gonna do good, hit some PRs, put together a nice uh, raw total. This will be her first raw meet too, so it'll be just an overall fun experience for her. Nice little break from the equip lifting. All right, go for it. Well, it would have been nice to have a pre-meet interview. I didn't really get one. All the other coaches got one though. I guess I'm just, not an important coach. I don't know. We'll see. My lifters are going to go out here and have a phenomenal meet because that's what we plan to do. Uh, I don't really care about these interviews, but uh, yeah, it would have been nice to have one. Tim, I'm having an emergency. What's wrong? I'm, uh, I'm not feeling very great now. I'm starting to feel a little tired. You're not feeling very what? I'm starting to feel a little tired. Well, why were you up at 4 o'clock in the morning? See, I woke, okay, so I woke up at, I went to bed at like 8, 8.30, I ate a bunch of food, and then I woke up at like midnight, and then I woke up at midnight, and then I was like wide awake, and then I just stayed up till like 4, and I played uh, a couple games of Smash, made some food, and that's it. You're joking, right? Like, no, you're, no, I'm serious. Like going back to sleep might be a good idea. I went to bed at 4. Okay, so sometimes I really hate you. All right, Tim, how do you feel about uh, Asa going into this meet right now? <laughs> how do you feel about this session that you are about to embark on? It's, uh, it's going to be what it is. Um, his meet prep went pretty good. Um, he's had some outside factors that heavily influenced it, so like, um, he had to go to New York for two weeks because of some military training. Um, he got sick. He made some bad choices, but the past three, four weeks have been really good leading into it. So I think um, I think he's in a good position to hit some PRs, probably get a good PR total, and, and you know move on and, and get back to training with some intentionality and, and make some more progress. All right, so.
Wait, hold what up. Is, pause. What is, your, what is your favorite lift in life? Okay, I was like, are you going to ask me? Or... <laughs> All right, cool, cool. No, my, uh, my favorite lift definitely has to be squat because every time you unload the weight, like you already know if it's going to be a grinder or if it's going to be an easy weight. And then once you hit the hole, you might be wrong, and it turns out being a grinder anyways, even if you thought it was going to be easy. So that's why I like that lift the most. Unpredictable. Yeah, it's unpredictable, exactly. What? Uh, mostly because I like to eat. Uh, I also have really huge legs, so it kind of gives me an advantage for that. Squats, because I can grind them out, and they're a lot of fun. My favorite lift is squat. I think squat symbolizes a lot that happens in life. Super cheesy, but you know, like uh, it's kind of like no matter what puts you down, or like no matter how much weight puts you down, you stand back up and even more strong. And so, and just squat is also my favorite because I think I'm like proportionally shaped for squat, so it's just like a very natural lift for me. And that was the first lift that was like um, I was confident in in powerlifting, and that's probably why it's my favorite one. And because everybody hates it, so yeah. <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! Up! 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 There you go. Her openers weren't like anything conservative or anything. They were right around where we wanted to be. So we just took like um, a decent sized jump on that second attempt on seven kilos. Um, and that was a little bit heavy, a little bit heavier than we anticipated. So we just took two and a half on the third just to make sure she gets uh, the best chance of finishing and going three for three on the squad. Let's go, let's go. Got it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Go to work, Steven. Go to work, Steven. Go to work, Steven. Just another day at the gym, Steven. Let's go. Let's go! Fight! Fight for it! It's all you, Aether. <laughs> <laughs>
Just another day at GSS, Asa. Let's go. All of my money is blue. All of my money is blue. But don't need this. I'm about to go get the money. What? All of my money to who? You keep telling me, keep telling you what? Why to be running to you? Why? There you go. Come on. Come on. Get it up. Get it up. Get it up. The hard work is in uh, I'm a firm believer in going like nine for nine, uh, taking you know conservative thirds, building a total, trying to trying to get the biggest total you can. And if you get PRs along the way, then so be it. But yeah, it's a squat went really well. Um, uh, his second was a PR. Uh, third was probably a little bit on the uh, aggressive side, but he hit it a little bit of a grinder. Um, he said he feels good. So um, yeah, overall things are moving. Game plan stays stays true and uh, on the bench. Being able to build his confidence is something that we've been working on tremendously. Uh, he was able to get his first attempt, which uh, was 363, went on for his second, 385, and just came short of his third attempt, which was 402. Um, the sticking point was just coming out the hole and it was just maintaining tension from there and it kind of threw him out of groove and uh, just lost a lot of tension at the end of that lift right there. And so uh, moving on the bench, I'm very excited, happy for him. I think the rest of the meet is going to go exactly how he wants it to go. Yeah, talking to my mirror like I love you so much. Curving on my critics like I heard you, so what? You can't kill my confidence, I think I'm the man. Tally all the f I ever gave on my head. Oh, the bench press. Personally, my arch nemesis. But before we get to catch up with our lifters to see how they performed in this portion of the competition, I wanted to shed some light on the levels of competition in powerlifting and what kind of opportunities does powerlifting offer its lifters. There are actually six different levels of competition in uh, powerlifting. Uh, level one is like this meet right here. It's a local meet. Level two is the state level. Level three, that's called uh, group nationals, where you've got uh, high school nationals, collegiate nationals, firemen and policemen nationals, and military nationals. And then moving on up to there is number four, open nationals. That's a very important one because it, it's a huge meet, and uh, that's where you qualify to move on to the upper levels where you compete for the United States on a world team. Level five would be the North Americans. And then level six is the world championships. And of course you compete as an individual winning medals, but more importantly, you compete to win points for the United States as a team. And it's really refreshing to uh, compete at that level where it's not all about me, it's about you, your teammates, and your country. All right, uh, talking about some of the opportunities that I've noticed with a lot of powerlifters nowadays, um, getting to go to college, having a team that's huge that ends up being your second family. Um, there's a lot of kids that go to smaller high schools that don't always have great teams. But once you get into the college level lifting, you get a bigger group of lifters together that end up spending four years of their collegiate life together, training every day together, eating together, doing stuff on the weekends together. So the opportunity is that you're going to have this group of people grow up with you in your collegiate life, becoming an adult, then after that, you'll see them for years to come if you continue in lifting and even if not you just have that group to be around all the time to just you'll see their family grow you'll grow and then you're growing together and being able to have a group that you had four years of your life to compete with just to have life and grow up with i believe that powerlifting really offers everyone an opportunity to advance themselves in a way that most people really wouldn't get a chance to you know a lot of us join this sport thinking it's just going to be a way for us to get in shape but it ends up being something that gives you friendships, it helps you better yourself as a person, almost in the way that, you know, like joining the army or going away on a trip across the world would do. It's, it's an opportunity for you to really take something that you can progress in 
and learn something about yourself on the way because you're molding yourself into the best possible athlete you can be. And in order to do that, you have to overcome a lot of personal issues, a lot of issues with other people, a lot of issues with the world in general, and then also really discipline yourself by getting a hold of your nutrition, um, forcing yourself to get rid of bad habits in the gym, really molding your technique. And I just think that's beautiful because most people don't get that opportunity and a lot of people just get sucked into this sport and ended up getting spit out a completely different person than they were when they started, myself included. So it's, it's great. Everyone benefits from it. I mean, opportunity can be defined like in your own perspective. For me, opportunity was when I was a freshman in high school, I only did powerlifting just to get stronger for football. But as the years progressed, I like began, I began to love the sport more and more. And I was like, you know, once by the time I was my senior year, you know, I like, you know, dropped out of like basketball just because I just love powerlifting a whole lot more. And um, my coach on the way back from the state actually like informed me, he's like, hey, maybe you should try out for the UTSA powerlifting team. And that's when I, you know, emailed the team and Davion got a text back from me. And then that's when I came here and the opportunities that I've gotten just from being here just for like pursuing powerlifting, you know, beyond what high school had offered me. I was like, it was incredible. I was like, I never would have known. Honestly, if I didn't do powerlifting, I probably still would have been a business major instead of, you know, a kines major and, you know, pursuing more into fitness um, education and then, you know, a business management major. <laughs> so I was like, my opportunity was, it allowed me to see who, like, I really wanted to pursue as a career or, like, what I really wanted to pursue as a career. Opportunities in powerlifting. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Um, the biggest opportunity, obviously, I think, for, for most people getting into powerlifting, of course, is, you know, it's going to be competition. Most, most lifters get in it, you know, wanting to have fun and being able to have an opportunity to compete. A lot of us, you know, have come from, you know, competitive backgrounds, be it football, basketball, baseball, um, whatever that, that competitive background had been, um, and you tend to miss having competition. Well, powerlifting is an easy, um, not necessarily easy, but it's, a, it's an awesome opportunity for a person to, to acquire that, that, that chance to go and compete against you know, the next lifter, the next person to kind of quench that thirst for competition. Um, another one I would say, as far as two would go, would be just, you know, as powerlifting's popularity has grown, there's been more opportunities to make money. Uh, meaning there's money meets, there's prize, uh, prize money that, that people can actually acquire as a result of having a good performance. But again, not everyone's going to be a top one, top two, top three percent powerlifter to be able to win those. So you're, you're starting to see a lot of those um, money, a lot of those money meets starting to be more spread and dispersed out amongst the local level, not just at the, the higher level meets. So you're starting to see a lot more people, you know, uh, get involved in a powerlift because they are able to make a little bit of a coin. And it is, it's not like you're trying to make thousands and thousands of dollars, but you know, some people just want to make their, you know, they want to make their entry fee back. I mean, to be able to go to a meet after the gas and all the food and all the stuff that you know, one goes through, to be able to make just a little bit, to make a hundred bucks, that pretty much takes care of all the stuff that you went through in order to get to that meet. So it's it's kind of an expensive hobby to have. Um, and then on the lesser side, there's gonna be those top two or 3% of the lifters that actually are on that world-class level that actually have a chance to go to a world championship, you know, be it an IPF or an IPL, whatever that, you know, that federation may be, you know, for those top level lifters, there's that opportunity uh, to go lift at the international level. Now, you don't necessarily have to, you know, go to, say, an, an IPF or an IPL type meet. There, there are some federations that, you know, if you are good enough, your name gets out there, you might be able to get invited to an Arnold um, that's overseas. You might get invited to, you know, an APS meet that's, that's overseas. You might be able to get invited to, you know, down to Australia to a big dogs, you know, and compete against, you know, some of the biggest, biggest names, some of the strongest guys that have walked, they literally walked the planet. So it's really one of those opportunities that really presents themselves if you are one of those top tier, but you don't necessarily have to be considered a quote unquote top tier lifter in order to, to really acquire that that chance to compete on an inter international level it's just really it's really just what you're in it you know what what you're in for you know are you in for it you know in powerlifting to 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 make new friends you know to to have a chance to be competitive but have a chance to make money to compete against people you know on an international level i think it's just one of those things where it really kind of depends on a person like what are you trying to get out of this you know what i mean um but yeah, for the most part, it's usually a, a three or four prong in terms of money, competition, international competition, and of course, competing against the biggest dudes to get the biggest money. So you know, it's that's I mean, from what I what I've got, that's what it's at. Why powerlifting? 
So my original experience with powerlifting was in high school. My high school coach just kind of pulled me aside and said, we're going to put you in a suit. You look like you're kind of built for this and we'll see if you like it and if you don't, you'll have to do it again. So I did my first meet and I clearly never stopped doing it. It's something that I love. It's one of those sports that you get exactly how much out of it as you're going to put into it. So you're kind of your almost limiting factor in that way. You can claim you know, coaches or other limiting factors, you know, your, your body type's just not made for it, but really what's going to happen is it's how much effort you put into it. How much research are you going to do for your own body type? How much are you going to train? How hard are you going to work? Are you going to worry about nutrition? And for me, that's the most gratifying thing in the world to know that if I work really hard at this, I'm going to progress. And it's just about how long it's going to take for me to progress to where I want to. And that's, for me, that's one of the best things about powerlifting is that you can keep going forward and progressing as long as you're going to work for it. All right, so right now we're warming up for bench. About to take the last warm up in a couple of minutes. And so right now we're just uh, making sure she feels good. There's no tightness like in her back glutes, anything like that, so that way she can arch properly, create leg drive, create tension, um, and also just um, making sure she feels confident and she's ready. Um, and as far as like the lifting and competition goes, right now we're still just trying to put together just uh, as good of a total as we can, get as many attempts as we can, and um, just make sure she has a good first fun raw raw meet. So like with the with the way a meet is ran, are you conservative on certain lifts? Or are you going all in on certain ones? How do you dictate that? So for Grisella, this is her first raw meet, so she does want to have fun and see what she can do, but also still try to push herself a little bit. So then that's when you you talk to the lifter and find out what their expectations are of this meet and what your expectations are of them for this meet. And if you can, try to meet in the middle or figure out what's gonna be the best fit for this meet. Because this meet isn't super important because she's an equip lifter, so this is just a raw meet for fun. Her actual serious meet is going to be in December. So this is just to also give, uh, give us a good idea of where her numbers are at, so we have a better gauge for the equip side of it.
you know, um, he did pretty good. Um, uh, I think a seven and a half kilo PR, um, meat PR. Uh, I think twelve pound PR. Yeah, twelve pound PR total, or twelve all time PR. Um, he did really well. He, uh, we've been working a lot on soft touches, and I think that's one of the biggest things that's helped this bench so far. And um, yeah, just good energy throughout the meet and stuff. He's he's been really active, um, in line with his personality and stuff. But yeah, just really good technical proficiency today, and and that's gone a long ways. So would you say he's surpassing your expectations based off of the circumstances going into it? No, I think, uh, and, and I've told them this many times, uh, that his his potential is significantly higher than where he's currently at. It's um, something I've talked to him many, many times about is intentionality, just being very intentional with his movement. And like, for whatever reason, I, I, I just don't think it's part of his personality. He, he lacks that a lot of times. Um, and this is just a sport where like, if you if you aren't super intentional with what you're doing, like you're going to leave kilos on the table. And, and luckily enough today, he's, he's been on top of it. He's been really good with his technical work and, and is showing in his performance today, so. There are three disciplines involved in powerlifting. You've got squat, you've got bench, and then you've got deadlift. Invariably, most of the three lift lifters are weakest on bench. And I will say of the three different disciplines, bench involves uh, more with respect to technique and form than the other two. So it's really hard to get it exactly right, but it's so important. You will never be the best you can be until your form is spot on perfect. But once you've got it and you're in a groove, you can really do great things with it. So yeah, bench is my uh, number one. And um, also, since I am a bench specialist, I don't have to uh, do the other two. So I'm basically lazy. I can focus everything on bench. The last discipline of a powerlifting meet is the deadlift. Before we catch up with our three lifters, I had a question. What is the strategy to a powerlifting meet? Yeah, I'll say the best strategy is to win. That's it. Just win, be the strongest, be better. But seriously, I'll say um, just take your attempts, know what you're doing, be quick, be ready, and win. That's it. <laughs> strategy with the powerlifting me, I treat it more as a marathon rather than a sprint because there's three lifts you have to do and then there's also you have to wait between other people as well and usually with like first time lifters the hard part is the very first squat and then afterwards it's just coasting from there. Uh, so each one of my lifters I come in with a full game plan based on all of their training that they've had and so I've got everything dictated for all their attempts with ranges to be within. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of things you have to consider on meet day. Um, the flow of the meet, any fatigue that starts taking place, overall anxiety. So you have to be willing to change attempts, but um, I like to come in fully prepared and have a head start on everything that we're doing for the day. Um, you know, especially with all my lifters, I'm going to take in consideration on the roster who they're going against. Um, if I, well, all my people, I want them to try to do as best as possible. So. Uh, I'm gonna, if I have to strategize against other people and make sure we win, then I'm gonna do what we have to do. And then uh, you have like quite a few uh, lifters just in general. Oh yeah. How often are you uh, at a meet? It feels like every weekend. Um, when I look at the schedule, it's probably about every other weekend throughout the entire year. So we're looking, to say 25, 30 meets a year is probably a pretty good guess. Um, I've had meets where sometimes I may just have one lifter. I've had some that are upwards of a 13 and I'm handling it all of myself. Um, but would it change it? Uh, people, I get questioned all the time of how do I balance that? I don't know. 
I think it's just I've been doing it for so long and I have such a good communication with all of our lifters exactly where they're at from warm ups to their attempts. Everything's in my head. It's already planned out, ready to go. So there's no thinking on the spot. I know it instantly. Yeah, there actually is a strategy as far as uh, powerlifting meet goes. Um, the strategy is, of course, to make all attempts, to build a total. Um, as far as some people go, some people just want to go in and guns are blazing and just try to PR, 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 which is not a bad thing. But for, for me and for a lot of the, the people that I coach, um, the biggest strategy is going to be to build, a, um, to build a total just by making as many attempts as possible. If you don't make attempts, it's wants to have a strategy, right? So you go in with the with the goal in mind of making every single thing that your hands touch. So from the beginning of the time walking into the door, hitting every single one of your, your warm-up attempts to the fact of when you go in there, the first selection that you make, making sure that you get yourself in the meat, hit that attempt, make sure you hit depth, make sure that you know that you have the right pause, make sure that you lock out the knees, whatever that, you know, whatever that judges need, you make sure that you hit that thing. Um, and of course again, making sure that you go three for three with each one of those disciplines then by the time you get obviously once you get out of the meet hopefully if you hit all the attempts then you're going to be you're going to be one of the people to beat you know so again you want to make sure that you're hitting again like i say every single attempt I mean so i mean it's not so much necessarily as as much of a strategy as it is just a mantra of hitting all the attempts going nine for nine i mean if you're lucky you go 27 for 27 meaning that you get all white lights, all lifts. If you go nine for nine, you go 27 for 27, you're gonna be a hard person to beat. So at the end of the day, you wanna make sure that you make attempts. That's, in my opinion, that is the greatest, if not the only strategy one should have going into a meet. I actually have a new lifter first meet, this meet at Iron Wars, and he's more of a, I don't know, I'd say Jeremy's a little bit more relaxed. Um, he's not as like hype or aggressive, and so, to me, coaching is all about matching the energy of your lifter. If he's a relaxed lifter, I come in way too hype, way too aggressive, that's just not gonna mesh well, and he's not gonna be able to deliver on kind of that aggressive strategy versus we're coming in here to have fun, we're coming in here to get our feet wet, get some experience, and so that's what it's about. It's about trying to go nine for nine, and the, the mentality is exactly that. It's let's just have fun, it's an SPD day, um, now we're doing it in front of judges, in front of an audience, but it's the same thing that we've been doing for weeks, for months. Now, how does that differ from, let's say, a seasoned lifter going into their first meet versus someone getting into powerlifting going into their first meet? Because obviously the seasoned yeah. lifter will have these expectations. You yeah. know, and things like that going into it. They've obviously been to a powerlifting meet before without like competing into it. Does the coaching or the strategy change uh, a little bit? On That's actually a really good like nuanced question. Uh, a lot of people don't appreciate that. So. Take for instance like somebody that's played collegiate sports and they've played sports their entire life and then now they're getting into powerlifting as that competitive outlet, they're probably gonna bring that hype. They're probably gonna bring the intensity. Like it, you just can figure that's gonna happen. Like you've seen the, the movies and the football locker rooms and all that. So they're accustomed to the competition versus somebody that this might be their first sport. Uh, so they're not as familiar with, all right, cool, this is the person that I'm going up against. Some people aren't into that, but then some people are like, cool, I wanna beat every single person in my weight class, like this is gonna be my qualifier, that sort of thing. Uh, so you, you do have to manage those expectations as well. Sometimes if somebody isn't thinking about like, all right, cool, this is the competitive mindset, that's something to coach. It's something to coach as far as, hey, this is how you stack up. Or, like, on the flip side, you might get some people that are thinking too competitively and kind of overanalyzing. Like, they're constantly looking at their rankings, the database numbers, comparing themselves to others. I have an uh, OU lifter that kind of falls into that trap. And so I'm trying to coach him out of that, of, hey, let's focus on our strategy because that's what we can control, that's what we execute on, and then that outcome is gonna stack you up better compared to your peers as well. Best strategy you can have is to not change a single thing. Treat it just like you would any other day, any other lift, anything that you would treat as far as a, a single uh, heavy lifting day. The only thing that's gonna change is the platform, that's it. My favorite lift out of all the lifts has to be the deadlift for sure. I feel like that takes the most technique to learn how to do correctly, because I pull sumo. 
I feel like there's so many opportunities to just hurt yourself or blow out your back so quickly. I feel like it's like the most manly of the lifts to do. You just pick shit off the ground. That's why I love it so much. My favorite lift overall should probably be the deadlift because it's the most of that, well for me at least, it's the most I can lift out of squat, bench. Um, and it's just, I've had great experiences with deadlift and I'm just still in progress with squat and bench, but deadlift is just, I mean everyone loves deadlift, even like during the end of me, everyone's like hyper deadlift. So, I would have to say deadlift. Uh, my favorite lift is the deadlift. Um, during a competition, it uh, kind of dictates either if you have the last deadlift in the competition, you basically control the outcome of the, lift, the competition. So they have to chase you to beat you, and you basically know what you have to hit in order to win. Yeah! Visualize greatness. I will do it. I will do good. Just wait. And then we will take pictures in front of the USA banner. Yeah. Oh my god, we didn't do that. Well, we will save it for later. Because we only do that Exactly, after. yeah. We, we do that after, not, not before. I do not want bad juju. Yeah, no bad juju. Okay. Uh, How much more time do we have till we go? No bad juju. Hey. Chill. Okay. You anxious capybara? So, how, how is uh, going into the last uh, lift? How are you feeling? Where do you, uh, how do you feel Steven is doing so far? Uh, Steven's doing great. He, he wrapped up bench. Uh, with flying colors, I mean, each attempt only got better and better. And so uh, I think it's great momentum going into deadlift, looking for some big numbers. Uh, hopefully hit around five, a little bit more. I don't know, we'll see what we get out of it. Um, see how his warm ups go. Try to get him in a good rhythm. Just finished eating, said he feels good. Uh, so we'll try to keep it that way. powder helps create less friction and so that's what we're trying to use it for just create less friction especially if you're pulling really close into your body and either that bar is snagging on your socks or getting stuck on your skin or the same thing with your arms that's why you just saw I don't know if you can see it on the camera but she wiped that baby powder on her forearms because sometimes you'll get stuck your skin starts sticking and you just start dragging against it so to help create a um, frictionless pull you add baby powder and you just always want to make sure you never let the lifter touch it because then that bar will immediately slip out of their hands and I always let them like wipe it off on my, my back or something or I'll get hand sanitizer like you said because like, it'll dry them out.
I was explaining to somebody how I feel like the meet's been like a roller coaster. Like, you know, squats were kind of going and then they kind of went down and then bench was going and then it went down. Now deads, we're like, we're moving up. We're doing good. So hopefully we keep moving up with this last attempt, this last attempt. I'm trying to break two state records. Uh, the Texas state record for raw, uh, what is it? Team three and uh, collegiate. So I've always been trying for records, even in equipped, like, my, my, I guess my time wasn't there, so I hope this is the time, even though it's not equipped, but it'd be so great to do it raw, because I'm not a raw lifter, so let's get it. I'd walk over there on the side of the judges. Make it easy, Griselda, come on! Let's go, Steven. Come on. Come on, Steven. Go to work, Steven. Come on, Steven. performance being her first raw meet and uh, where do you go from here as a coach and a client? So first raw meet definitely as expected there are going to be some weaknesses some flaws that had to be addressed and but that's why we do the meets and it's to be able to see those and, and find those because they're not always going to be evident in training especially when you don't get to push yourself as much as you typically do at a meet. So now that we know what areas we really need to work on and focus on and spend a little bit more time strengthening, then we know that's only going to help her get stronger raw and then onto the equipped. So Grisella's mainly an equipped lifter, so this meet was also just for fun and just to see what she could what she could do without actually training for a raw meet. We we did this um, <clears throat> meet with minimal amount of actual prep work as we typically would for a regular equipment but um, it's still like a really good indicator of where she's at and what we need to work on so all in all it was a good experience for her um, for myself and learning experience for both of us and I think it just it, it was just a good experience for her like she had fun and it was just cool getting to see her push herself. Uh, squat went well went two for three on squat missed his third attempt 
Uh, it was a little bit of a push, however, I knew it was something within reach and it was something I could definitely do. Uh, bench, bench went well, uh, a lot better than expected. We hit the numbers that we planned to hit. Opener was 220, we went from 220 to 231, and then from 231 we went 242. Everything was smooth. He said he cramped up a little bit after his second attempt, and so I took a little bit of a more conservative approach and went 242 for his third, um, and that seemed to go well. Uh, deadlift warm-ups were flying. He ate good before uh, warming up for deadlift. He was hydrated. Didn't get too much caffeine, and I think that was very beneficial for him. The last time he competed, he had a lot of caffeine in him, and I think it was more detrimental to his performance going into deadlifts than anything. Uh, he cramped up, and it really showed. So this time, we took a different approach. Um, more water, a little less caffeine, and it seemed to do very well for him. Uh, his opener, 463, went good. Uh, from 463, we went 490. 490 was faster than the 463, so I'm like, okay, this is gonna be a little bit different. So we deviated from the plan a little bit, and then from 490, we went 512. Why was 512 faster than all three attempts? It was crazy. I, I did not see that coming at all. So you can say the, the taper that we had for his deadlift uh, worked very well. So I guess that's a recipe. We're gonna continue to stick with that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, so went well, well. Very proud of him, and I think he's excited about his performance today. And uh, yeah, we'll see what we can put in next time. When, when do you have him? Uh, ideally, when would you want him to compete again? When would I want him to compete again? Uh, I'd say another two months, three months. I'm not really in a rush. Uh, whenever he wants to compete, he's smart. He's knowledgeable about you know timing and putting in uh, an adequate amount of time prepping for a meet um, so I would assume three to five months he'd be ready to compete again I don't want him to get burnt out and you know try to try to get discouraged or his burnout is real when you're constantly in meat prep it's very draining and so uh, he'll probably take some time off for a little bit and then get back to it in a few weeks but yeah how do you feel about his meat in general um I think it's really good um his bench speak really well, so I think we, we kind of have a good good idea of what, what kind of volume he can tolerate on, on bench and stuff. His deadlift was pretty steady all the way through prep. Didn't really peak too much, um, and so I'm going to go and try some new things. I also think attempt selection could have been better. Um, it was something that we kind of gone back and forth on, and ultimately I let him make a choice on that. I, that's just a learning experience for... Him as him as an athlete, and then you know me as a coach, just kind of you know saying, hey, like no, this is probably the better way we should do it, and going with that. Oh, um, but like ultimately, really good meet, eight for nine, uh, PR total. Uh, he did PR all three lifts, so like can't really can't really be too upset with that. And um, I think he was starting to see the the benefit of the you know the improved technical proficiency that he's been putting putting more attention to att attention to. Uh, these past two weeks of prep and yeah. How do you feel going forward? I'm really excited, uh, mainly because I think he has a lot of room to grow still. Uh, he's underweight in his weight class. Um, he wants to start getting back on top of better nutrition. There's a lot of like technical things that we can still really work on. Um, we've been in the process like this is the first time he squatted with this new squat technique and it's it paid dividends like already. Um, He's a lot more upright. He's not good morning as much. So that's just another thing. Going forward, a lot of tempo work on squats, um, a lot more pause deadlifts, and then just uh, probably a, a lot more continuing to hold high volume on bench.
breath and my lips feel big from the bit. Take a sip till I pass out. Try and get grit, but it don't make sense. Cause you can lose life on this fast route. Yeah, turn thoughts to a cash cow. I might flip that to the glass house. I don't need the accolades, I'm in love with the chase. I just wanna eat, save a spot at the table. Beast with the slap, hit myself on the map. You long with the wind, but we knowin' that it's cap. Five hour flights, couple nights at the flat. To be real, could you see me making moves while I'm at? I'm still on the grind, limit time when I chat. I'm burning down sage, keep the demons away. When I write it, give a piece of myself to the page. I don't do it for the praise, love. That's just how I'm made. Truth in the glass in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. Do it at me, old man, tryna pass in the fear. You're the first one to talk, but the last one to hear. Eyes blurry, but I couldn't see that. And he cleared down. Start to feel like I'm on one Instead of laying, I be here for the long run I'm a slave for the cash, got snakes in the grass No brakes on the head, but it's all fun We done seen it all, heard it all Heard enough, give me space before I murder y'all Ten bad tear, I'ma curve them all Twelve missed calls, and I still made a curtain call Here to light it up, lighten up Heard I'm talking, ain't right enough, tighten up Everything that I came for, I left with I don't bang sets, I just bang on the set list Going past supper when I came for the breakfast Put me in your prayers, I might put you on the guest list Young, to me reckless Gold in my soul, got the same on my necklace Thank you. No, I say good goodbye. Goodbye. To goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. You. Share this. Goodbye. 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 All right, bye for real. Thank you so much. I'm out this bitch.